Hello and welcome to this week's episode of GameSack. And this week we're going to dedicate the entire episode to the NEC TurboGrafx-16 game system. It is a fantastic little thing and it's underrated and overlooked both in its time and these days. It deserves much more attention than it gets. Yeah, you got that right. This thing is awesome. And I dare you to go down to your local game store and try to find one of these things. It is damn near impossible. I've been looking for years just to see if I could find one. And I would even know because I've also worked at a game store too. So let's take a closer look at this thing. The TurboGrafx-16 was designed around a similar CPU as the one inside the NES, only much more powerful. Many people write the system off as 8-bit, but really it was part of the 16-bit generation. It played games on credit card sized Hue cards, which were called Turbo Chips in the US, but I'll always prefer calling them Hue cards. The biggest Hue card game was Street Fighter II Champion Edition, which came with 20 mega power, but unfortunately was never released in the US. Speaking of Japanese games, you'll need a converter like this one to play them on your US system, or you'll need to get your system modified. Unfortunately, the converters are not cheap these days. That's why many people buy Japanese systems like the Core Graphics, as they are very easy and cheap to obtain and support with games. The Turbo was also the first home video game console to have a CD-ROM add-on, and it was quite ahead of its time for the day. It attached to the system from behind and also offered composite video outputs and direct stereo audio out. This didn't add any horsepower to the TurboGrafx system itself other than the CD audio and lots and lots of storage space. In Japan, most games ended up being released on CD and you'll also find some of the best games on CD in the US as well. In late 1992, the Turbo was redesigned and relaunched under a new banner called Turbo Technologies, which released what we know as the Turbo Duo, an all-in-one unit that combined Hue Card, CD, and Super CD. Super CDs require more RAM, than the older CD games and the Duo had this built in. If you wanted to play Super CDs on the old TurboGrafx CD, you needed a Super System card which Turbo Technologies also released, making the old system every bit as powerful as the new. The Duo is probably the best way to get into TurboGrafx games as you won't need to hunt down appropriate system cards to play most games. Japanese Duos tend to be a bit cheaper and unlike the Hue cards, CD games have no region protection. Japanese games are also a bit cheaper, so you might as well buy lots of Japanese Hue card games as well. There was also an upgrade released only in Japan called the Arcade Card, which allowed for 18 megs of RAM, which was amazing for the time. Not many games were released to be used with this card, but those that were were pretty impressive. There were some pretty cool ports of Neo Geo fighting games and a cool shooter called Ginga Fukai Densetsu Sapphire. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? All right, that's pretty cool. The system was pretty juicy for its time, I think. Oh, yeah. But what good is a game system without good games? Oh, that's true. It all boils down to the games that were available for the system. And there were tons of great ones, and we can't cover them all here. There's just no way. So why don't we just take some that we feel everyone should take a closer look at because they're really good games. In fact, uh, why don't you go first and tell them what people should look at. Okay. Splatterhouse is a side-scrolling action game with seven levels. The story surrounds the West Mansion where Dr. West did all his experiments and created deformed beings and monsters. Playing each stage, the controls in this game are great for the most part, and it's easy to get used to the floaty feel of the main character. The levels auto-scroll and are average length with some of them having branching paths. All are quite colorful and have detailed backgrounds. The music is great for the game and some of the tracks you might want to listen to on your MP3 player while waiting for the bus. Sound effects are nice and creepy and round out the nice horror feel of this game. Military Madness is a sci-fi themed hex map turn-based strategy game. The game takes place on the moon in the not so distant future. A typical strategy game where you have different types of units that have different strengths and weaknesses. Each unit can move a certain number of spaces and if in range can attack their enemy. Battles take place during a cutscene which shows how each side fares. Terrain will take effect on how well your battle will come out. If you are on a hill for example, you will be much stronger than if you are fighting on level ground because of the altitude advantage. This game is really awesome because it's not overly difficult and you don't have to worry about 5 bazillion things before you finish a turn. Just good old mind numbing gaming at its finest. Music is fairly lackluster and you won't be humming any of these tunes as you cut your grandmother's grass.
Dracula X is Castlevania at its finest. Set in 1792, you play as Richter Belmont, and just like every Castlevania game up to this point, your object is to kill Dracula and get your woman back before she gets the neck kiss of death. A side-scrolling level-based game, my favorite type of Castlevania, where you fight a boss at the end of each stage. A great feature in this game is branching paths. For example, as you are fighting your way through a level and you get knocked off a ledge, you think you are dead, right? Wrong. You fall off to a different path which could actually lead you to a different boss. The controls in this game couldn't be any better and the color palette is perfect and highlights the gloomy mood. Anime cutscenes with a voice and by far one of the best video game soundtracks ever recorded. This game is fairly rare and is in demand always, which drives the price up to the $100 range on eBay. In my opinion, it's worth every penny. Truly the perfect Castlevania game. Magical Chase is a side-scrolling shooter game also known as a Cutem Up. There are a total of six levels in the game which can be played on the normal and hard difficulty settings. Only the first three can be played on the easy difficulty setting. As enemies are destroyed, they leave different colored gemstones which serve as your game's currency. Twice during each level, a balloon appears where power-ups, health, and extra lives can be purchased. The control on this game is quite good. You have two stars that follow you like options from Gradius. These can be directed to fire in one direction or fire in the opposite direction of your last D-pad movement. The stages are all fairly long with mid-bosses and are beyond colorful. Backgrounds are decently detailed and the music fits the game nicely. The soundtrack on its own has a few good tunes but nothing you would want to listen to to cover up your girlfriend's never ceasing talk. The game is quite rare in the USA as it came out very late in the system's life and an auction can fetch upwards of $1,500 for game and manual only. The Japanese version can fetch close to $200 as it is more common. Is it worth it? I don't think so. Star Parodia is a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up or another cute 'em up. It is a parody of the Star Soldier series similar to Konami's Parodia series and was originally only released in Japan. The game comes on a CD and has some decent music and sound effects. I like parts of this soundtrack but not so much the others. At the beginning, you can choose from one of three characters. Bomberman, which his power-ups will look like they do in Bomberman games. Secondly is Paro Caesar, which is from Star Soldier I imagine. His power-ups resemble Star Soldier. Finally is a PC Engine. Yep, you fight as a small game system. His power-ups look like Hue cards. Each has three different types of weapons and Super Bomb. A great game and very fun to play. I would recommend this game to anybody, even Michelle Obama. All right, Joe, those are the games that I think people should take a look at. Oh yeah, those are some pretty good games. Thanks. What do you have? Well, I've got some good games that everyone should look at. Some of them are popular, some of them aren't so popular, but everyone should take a closer look at these games. First up is Legendary Axe. It's an early hack and slash game with very precise jumping controls. It's a really tough game and I usually turn it off when I die due to everything you have earned up to the point of your death being taken away. But that doesn't mean I don't have tons of fun getting up to the point where I die. I often pull this one down from the shelf for a quick play. There is also a sequel called Legendary Axe 2 that is completely unrelated to this game but I feel it is even better than part 1. It's a bit more floaty, much darker, and more somber. But this game goes balls out in the action department and features big bosses and really fun stages. If you beat the game, the ending is not exactly what you'd expect from a game like this. Next up is R-Type, an arcade shooter from the late 80s. In fact, this is one of my favorite versions of R-Type. I like it even more than the arcade version due to the far superior sound and music. Sure, it doesn't feature all of the parallax scrolling that the arcade did, but I can live without it. This is another game where I play until I die for the first time, and then I turn it off. I can usually make it to about stage 5 or so. Definitely one of the more creative shooters of its time. Pick it up. One of the games that really sold me on how awesome this system is was Ease Book 1 and 2. I was blown away by this when my friend bought the $400 CD-ROM attachment for his TurboGrafx-16 back in high school. It uses professional voice actors, some of which are from TV shows and movies such as Michael Bell and Thomas Hayden Church. <laughs> oh, you are brave, but you are also a fool. 
Ease 3, Wanderers from Ease, was a departure as it went to a side view with more of an emphasis on action. Rather choppy action at that. But it was still really fun and had great music. But the voice acting was, it was just awful. Both you and Demanicus are living beings with emotions and feelings. Why? Ease 4 was never released outside of Japan, unfortunately. It begins by showing the events at the end of Ease 2, which is completely awesome. Then Adol goes out on his own seeking new adventures. This game returns to the top-down perspective and, as always, the music is amazing. Gate of Thunder was the shooter that debuted with the Turbo Duo in the US. It's definitely one of the better shooters of its day and offers a fairly robust challenge and phenomenal music. One thing about this game that still blows me away is how short the loading times are. The programmers did an amazing job disguising them. There was a spiritual sequel to this game called Lords of Thunder that was pretty cool and much easier. It also comes highly recommended, but I think in the end I prefer Gate of Thunder over this. Finally, we have J.B. Harold Murder Club, which got severely overlooked because it came out at almost the same time as Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, which was the first console game with full motion video. J.B. Harold only features digitized stills, but it is the far better game. You go around on a graphical text adventure trying to find clues to a murder. The story is very well done and you can listen to the voices in Japanese. Or you can switch them to English. I finished my shift at 8 o'clock, changed clothes, and went home. What can I tell you? I lead a dull life. Every line of dialogue in the game is voiced in both languages. You'll spend a lot of time with this one trying to crack the case. Very dated, but it's still really one of my favorites. Check it out. As you can see, the Turbo Graphics is a great system, and the games that came out for it are just plain awesome. There's too much to talk about in one episode, and not even five episodes we could fit everything in that we'd like to say. But I suggest to you that you go and try and find a system which is sadly going to be on eBay, uh, or you can just go the easy way and download them on the virtual console for the Wii service. Don't write the TurboGrafx-16 off. I mean, just because it wasn't popular or didn't sell well doesn't mean it doesn't have tons of great, fantastic games. Go try it now. Now. But you can wait till later if you want. Turbo graphics. Magical dinosaur tour. I can't beat the last boss on that. I better call the hint line and get some help. Where's that phone number? Here it is. The number you dialed is not a working number. Please check the number and dial again. Out of service? Why the hell would this be out of service? <laughs>